So we're in Adobe Photoshop and what you've done is you've prepared a whole load of different images that you want to combine into one document, whether that's to create a photo album or a card that you can use to share all of your memories and send to someone, or you just want to create a photo collage that contains loads of images with similar themes. Well, what I'm going to do in this tutorial is show you all of the best practices to create a collage in Adobe Photoshop. Great, so welcome back to my design class. Like I said, what we're going to do is cover exactly how we can create photo collages or photo albums, whatever you want to create in Adobe Photoshop. So all you're going to need in order to follow along with the tutorial is just a whole load of images that you want to combine into a collage. And then it's also handy to have a new document open. You don't have to have this background. I've just added it because I like it. It's just a smooth gradient from top to bottom with a white border on the edges. But obviously feel free to create and style your collage to however you want it to look. The designs that I'll be making in the tutorial are by no means the ones that you need to create. So the two techniques we'll be covering today to create our collages is firstly we'll be using just normal masks and the second technique will involve using clipping masks. Now I highly recommend you stay around until we cover clipping masks because those are generally considered the more effective technique. But in order to start what we need to do is obviously first import all of our images. Now there is actually a way in Photoshop you can import all of your images into one project. Each image will be a separate layer in your project. And to do that, all you have to do is go to File, Scripts, and then go to Load Files into Stack. Then from here, what it will do is it will open the Load Layers window. And from here you can go to Browse and actually select all of the files that you want to include. Make sure you select multiple files, not just one single file because you obviously want to open all of the images that you want to use in your collage. And then once you've done that, all you have to do is press OK. Now there's nothing wrong by using this method. I actually prefer to do it a different way. The only thing I dislike about this is it always creates a new project with all of those layers. This means that I then have to actually move all of those images into this file anyway. So I feel that's a bit tedious. So I'm going to quickly press cancel. Then what I'm going to do is open my file explorer and find all of the images that I want to include. So as you can see, here are all of the images that I want to include in today's project. So what I'm going to do is just hold and select all of these and then drag them into my Photoshop project. And then as I release, what it's going to do is it's actually going to go through all of the images one by one. And it's going to allow me to actually move and transform those shapes if I so want. I'm actually going to leave them how they are. So I'm just quickly going to press on the tick or you can press enter on your keyboard. And it's going to go through all of those five images that I had until the very last one like that. And now all of our images are in our document. Now what I always like to do before I start to do anything like this is actually apply a ruler to my project and create guides so I can see where all of these things are going to be positioned. So if you can't see the rulers in your project, all you have to do is go to view and then tick on rulers. Just make sure there's a tick next to that. I'm not going to press it because otherwise it's going to get rid of my rulers. So once that's ticked, you should see the rulers at the top and the bottom here. From here, you can create guides. So I have made a video on how to create guides. If you want to see how that works, then do check out the video in the description below. But I'm just going to quickly create four guides on each of the boundaries. And then I'm going to create one guide in the center. Like so, it should snap to the center and then also one in the horizontal center like so. So as you can see for this, what I'm going to do is use four different images, one in each of the corners of our canvas. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hide this top image and I'm going to use these bottom four images. So what I'm going to do is roughly place each of the images in the area that I want it. So as you can see, I'm going to place the robin in the top left hand corner here. I'm going to quickly hide that so I can see the next image and move that one in the top right. Obviously, feel free to put the images wherever you want them. I'm going to hide that one once again. I'm then going to select the next image and maybe place that in the bottom left hand corner here. And hide that one and then repeat the process with this last one. Now, as you can see, they don't all fit. They obviously extend all of the boundaries. I'm not going to worry about that for now. All I'm going to do is quickly unhide all of those layers once again. So they're now all here. So now we have each of our images in each of the corners, but obviously everything's overlapping and nothing is really clearly cut. So the best way to actually apply these images to a particular space is by using masks. To do this, we're going to find the marquee tool. So the rectangular marquee tool in the top left hand corner of our toolbar. As you can see, the shortcut to the marquee tool is M. So I'm just going to quickly select that. 
And now because we've got guys, it should be nice and easy to actually create a selection of just this top left hand box here. So I'm going to focus on this one for now. So I'm just going to quickly go to the top left hand corner, hold and drag out a selection until it snaps to the center. And now I should have a selection of the top left hand corner box. And then I'm going to go to the image that I want to mask to this area, which is obviously the Robin here. So that's image four in my layers panel. And then next, in order to actually create the mask, I'm going to go down to the bottom of the layers panel until we find a white rectangle with a black square in the middle. I'm going to press on that once, and now it's going to create a mask on that layer, which will mask it to that selection. So as you can see, the robin is no longer extending out of its box. So what I can do is repeat that process for the next three images. So I can create a selection here, make sure it snaps to all of the guides, go to the correct image on the layers panel, select it, Go to the bottom, create a new mask. I'll repeat it for the next two as well. So the next one, image two, create mask. And then finally, for the last one, I'll do that here too. Image one, create mask. Now, as you can see, our images are actually masked to those selected areas. So I'm quickly going to return to the move tool by pressing V on my keyboard because I prefer to have it in that state so I can actually move around my images. Now obviously we can still see the guides at the moment, which can be slightly annoying if we want to actually preview our design. So what I'm going to do is press Command and H or Control and H if you're on a Windows computer in order to see what it looks like without the guides. We can always return to the guides by pressing Command and H if you want them back. I'm going to quickly make sure they're undone for now. So now as you can see, we've actually created our collage. Obviously we don't have our fifth image, but you could also repeat that if you want to include that anywhere else in your canvas. Now obviously one of the immediate things you'll notice is that if I want to reposition this Robin within this mask space, perhaps I want to rescale it, rotate it or reposition it in general. When I go to move the image, what you'll notice is I actually drag out the entire masked image. And obviously I'm not only affecting the image, but I'm also affecting the mask attached to the image. So if I quickly undo that by pressing command and Z or control and Z for windows, the best way to actually undo this is if we go to our layers panel, what you'll notice is on the left hand side, we have the image itself. And then on the right, we have the mask, which is being applied to that image. And in the middle, we have this link symbol. So if I want to undo this, what I have to do is just simply press on that link. And as you can see, that's now disappeared. And now once we've done that, one of the things you have to pay particular attention to is which you actually have selected. So as you can see at the moment, the image itself is selected because this white box is around it. If I wanted to select the mask and not the layer, what I have to do is press on the mask and as you can see, that's now selected. So obviously this is something you have to pay attention to because if you're moving the mask and not the layer itself, you might not get the result that you are looking for. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that the image is selected. So the white box is around our layer thumbnail. And then what I can do is I can actually move around the image without affecting the layer mask. So for example, I can press command and T. And now when I rotate it, it's not actually going to rotate the layer mask with it. So for example, if I wanted this Robin upside down for some very strange reason, maybe a bit like so. As you can see, this Robin is now upside down, but the layer mask itself hasn't been affected which is obviously great because now I can reposition, rescale, rotate, etc., my image without affecting my collage. I can do the same for any of the other images. So for example, this butterfly, if I wanted to make it larger, all I have to do is press on the link, command and T, scale the image itself without scaling the layer mask, and then press enter once I'm happy with repositioning it. So as you can see, this is obviously a really easy and quick way to create a collage where you can actually go ahead and edit all of your images without actually affecting the collage shape or structure itself. And obviously this method also doesn't limit you to just using squares. You can also use any other shapes that you want. All you have to do is create a selection and make sure that the selection is filled in white on your mask. And obviously one of the slight downsides of using this method is that if you want to have multiple images within one box, it can be slightly hard because you actually have to start duplicating masks. And this is where the clipping mask technique comes in very handily. So what we're going to do is I've actually already created another template in this second tab here. And as you can see, we've got three different shapes, a circle, triangle, and rectangle in which we're going to be placing the images instead. So once again, what we're going to do is actually import our images first. 
So we're in the finder and what I'm going to do is quickly select three images. Let's use, let's also use this one. Why not? I'm going to quickly drag that into Photoshop once again, press enter, press enter and enter. You can obviously reposition them and scale them, rotate them, etc. If you want to do that in advance, I'm going to do that later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly place the Robin on top because I'm thinking I'm going to use that for the circle first. So as you can see, if I just quickly hide all of these layers is we've got these three shapes. And basically these three shapes are just layers that I've created with a solid fill color, just using some of the selection tools and also the shape tools. Once again, if you want to learn how to do that, the link will be in the description below. But what we're going to do is actually place our images within these shapes. And in order to do that, what we're going to do is use clipping masks. So in order to use clipping masks, what we essentially need are two layers. One layer that will be used as a template. Basically the outline of that layer will be used in order to create a mask on the other layer. So in this case, the layer that will be the template is the circle layer. And the layer that I want to have masked is obviously the image layer, which is this Robin. So I'm going to quickly place the Robin over our circle. Then what I'm going to do in the layer hierarchy in the layers panel, I'm going to quickly drag our image layer and place it just above our circle layer. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my keyboard and hold option or alt for windows. And as you can see, when I hover between the two layers, there's this new symbol with a black arrow pointing downwards and a small white square. All you have to do is left click with your mouse button once. And as you can see, this is now created a clipping mask. So what you'll notice immediately is that the image layer is actually masked to that layer below, which is the circle. And in the layers panel, our image layer has slightly moved to the right and we now have a white arrow pointing downwards. And this basically indicates that it is clipped to the layer below. Now, one of the immediate advantages of this is that the two layers aren't actually linked together automatically. So if I actually have the image layer selected, I can move around the image layer without affecting this circle layer. If I want to move the circle layer, if I have it selected and try to move it, obviously it won't move because it automatically select the image layer because it's higher in the hierarchy. So if I quickly undo that, what you have to do instead is make sure you have the layer selected. Make sure you're on the move tool, which is the first option on the left hand toolbar. And then go to the top where it says auto select and quickly untick that. And now what you can do is move the circle, making sure that the circle layer is selected. And as you can see, you can now move that. I'll quickly undo that and make sure auto select is reticked. If you want to quickly toggle on and toggle off auto select, all you have to do is hold command or control on your keyboard. As you can see, I've now got it held in and it's not actually appearing. So I can actually quickly move that circle. And just by releasing command or control, I can reposition the image. So once again, if you go to free transform, command T, control T, you can quickly reposition it, rescale, etc., whatever you want. So I can do this process for the other two shapes too. So for example, if I go to this next image, which is image five, I can move this over the triangle, drag the layer just above the triangle layer, hold option or alt on your keyboard, press and create the clipping mask, command and T, I can quickly reposition it, scale it so it's actually fits within our space, press enter. And now as you can see, I've got that within our triangular shape. Now lastly, I can obviously also do that for our final image drag that over the, our rectangle, move that to just above the rectangle in the hierarchy, hold option or alt, create the clipping mask, hold command and T or control and T, rescale it, maybe rotate it in order to match the rotated rectangle and roughly place it in position. I'm obviously gonna do this slightly roughly, but make sure you do it to however you want your collage to look. So as you can see, this is another way we can actually create our images and fit them within particular shapes. Now, like I said, the advantage of doing it this way is you can actually easily add two images within one shape. Now, unlike with the other method where you'd actually have to start duplicating masks onto different layers, by using clipping masks, you can essentially add another image really, really quickly. So for example, if I want to place this wasp in the circle with the robin, it's gonna look slightly odd, but if I quickly press on this wasp layer, all I have to do is hold option and alt once again in order to undo the clipping mask. And then gonna quickly create a mask on this layer, just so we have the wasp selected itself so that it won't actually wash out the entire image here. I will then also actually go back to the move tool and I might quickly actually make it slightly smaller using free transform and press enter. Obviously this is a very rough demonstration, so I don't think it's actually gonna look that great. But what we're going to do is drag our wasp layer, 
into the area that's covered by the circle. I'm then going to drag the layer itself just above the image of the robin layer. I'm then going to hold Option or Alt between the wasp layer and the robin layer. So as you can see, I can also add a clipping mask between those two layers. Press that once, and as you can see, that's now also been confined into the circled layer. So obviously that was a whole load of different steps and it might have been slightly confusing, but basically what we've done is I've decreased the size of the wasp layer just so we can see it within the demonstration. And then what I've done is I've moved that layer above the robin layer, which is this one, image four in the layers panel. And then I've created another clipping mask between image five and image four, which are these two images. And then as you can see, that's added a clipping mask, which is also using the same shape, the circle shape, and actually applied that to our image five. So as you can see, anytime I now move image five, it's also confined to that space, which is great because we can now actually have multiple images within one mask. It's much easier to have both images masked to one shape rather than having separate layer masks that you then need to affect. But hopefully this will now allow you to create some collages of your own. Let me know in the comments below if you have another way of creating a collage. There are obviously thousands of different techniques you can use to create collages in Photoshop, so I'll be very intrigued to read what you think. But otherwise, if you're interested in learning how you can actually use the pen tool in Adobe Photoshop, then do check out the video in the top right hand corner of the end screen. And also remember to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content and also do subscribe to the channel to make sure you never miss a new Photoshop tutorial.